Most wild animals which the Greeks hunt, the Indians hunt also. But these have a way of hunting elephants unlike all other kinds of hunting, just as these animals are unlike other animals. It is this they choose a place that is level and open to the sun's heat, and dig a ditch in a circle wide enough for a great army to camp within it. They dig the ditch five fathoms broad and four deep. The earth which they throw out of the ditch they heap on either side of the ditch, and so use it as a wall. Then they make shelters for themselves, dug out of the wall on the outside of the ditch, and leave small windows in them. Through these the light comes in, and also they watch the animals coming in and charging into the enclosure. Then within the enclosure they leave some three or four of the females, those that are tamest, and leave only one entrance by the ditch, making a bridge over it. And here they heap much earth and grass so that the animals cannot distinguish the bridge, and so suspect any guile. The hunters then keep themselves out of the way, hiding under the shelters dug in the ditch. Now the wild elephants do not approach inhabited places by daylight, but at night they wander all about and feed in herds, following the largest and finest of their number, as cows do the bulls. And when they approach the ditch and hear the trumpeting of the females and perceive them by their scent, they rush to the walled enclosure. And when, working round the outside edge of the ditch, they find the bridge, they push across it into the enclosure. Then the hunters, perceiving the entry of the wild elephants, some smartly remove the bridge, others hurrying to the neighboring villages, report that the elephants are caught in the enclosure, and the inhabitants, on hearing the news, mount the most spirited and at the same time most disciplined elephants, and then drive them towards the enclosure. And when they have driven them there, they do not at once join battle, but allow the wild elephants to grow distressed by hunger and to be tamed by thirst. But when they think they are sufficiently distressed, then they erect the bridge again and enter the enclosure, and at first there is a fierce battle between the tamed elephants and the captives. And then, as one would expect, the wild elephants are tamed, distressed as they are by a sinking of their spirits and by hunger. Then the riders, dismounting from the tamed elephants, tie together the feet of the now languid wild ones. Then they order the tamed elephants to punish the rest by repeated blows, till in their distress they fall to earth. Then they come near them and throw nooses round their necks and climb on them as they lie there and that they may not toss their drivers nor do them any injury. They make an incision in their necks with a sharp knife, all round, and bind their noose round the wound, so that by reason of the sore they keep their heads and necks still. For were they to turn round to do mischief, the wound beneath the rope chafes them, and so they keep quiet and perceiving that they are conquered, they are led off by the tamed elephants by the rope. Such elephants as are not yet full grown or from some defect are not worth the acquiring, they allow to depart. Then they lead off their captives to the villages and first of all give them green shoots and grass to eat. But they from want of heart are not willing to eat anything. So the Indians range themselves about them and with songs and drums and cymbals beating and singing lull them to sleep. For if there is an intelligent animal, it is the elephant. Some of them have been known, when their drivers have perished in battle, to have caught them up and carried them to burial. Others have stood over them and protected them. Others, when they have fallen, have actively fought for them. One indeed, who in a passion slew his driver, died from remorse and grief. I myself have seen an elephant clanging the cymbals and others dancing. Two cymbals were fastened to the player's forelegs and one on his trunk, and he rhythmically beat with his trunk the cymbal on either leg in turn. The dancers danced in a circle and raising and bending their forelegs in turn moved also rhythmically. As the player with the cymbals marked the time for them, the elephants mate in spring, as do oxen and horses, when certain pores about the temples of the females open and exhale. The female bears its offspring 16 months at the least, 18 at the most, 
It has one foal, as does a mare, and this it suckles till its eighth year. The longest lived elephants survive to 200 years, but many die before that by disease. But as far as mere age goes, they reach this age. If their eyes are affected, cow's milk injected cures them. For their other sickness, a draught of dark wine, and for their wounds, swine's flesh roast and laid on the spot are good. These are the Indian remedies for them.